Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Lord, help me to stand. Sometimes I'm tired. And sometimes I'm weak. But I stand here now where you have called me to be and so many others saying, I dare not say I can stand alone or by myself, but I can stand within your strength and within your guidance. Thank you, Master, for every word that we are hearing today, for giving us an opportunity and a chance to do it and say it the way that you said it. Please, Lord, I pray that somebody's heart will be just softened a little, to not be so hard so we can hear what you're saying to us and apply it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart that believes say amen. amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. This morning, the one thing that we have not done as of yet was welcome our visitors. Our visitors are extremely dear to us because our visitors are invisible members. And invisible members come by faith. We can have this system off above me, please. Sister Tabitha, or team, if this system above me, please. Um, and it may be, just it could be my earring. And, and so invisible members come by faith because faith is, is something you can't see, you just believe that it is. And then God makes it so. So if you're here today and you are from a visiting church, um, we have some wonderful sisters who have, have been ordained, I believe, blessed by God to have a spirit of greeting. They not only have a spirit of greeting, but they are professional cricket killers. You got to be anointed to be cute and kill crickets and wear tennis shoes to church. That's all I'm saying. I just thought I'd bring that up because some of y'all think that they're doing a praise dance and a holy dance. That, those are cricket killers. We thank God that we have enough doors for crickets to enter. Don't, Tell us about exterminating. We do all of that. We just, we love nature and dead crickets. I don't know how to get out of that. A few weeks ago, we started, two, uh, two weeks ago, a week ago, 10 days ago, I was here doing an example, and I'm going to ask Robo to do something real quick. I want Robo to join me down here. I want Robo to kind of get ready to hit right here. You're going to see today I have several Bibles in my presence, and that means that we use a lot of different ways of teaching the Bible here. You may see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten different Bibles, and I always keep them here because sometimes we get kind of stuck on, you know, well, I, that's not what I got from the Bible, and I get that. I was a, I was a, I was a non-believing believer for a long time. Meaning I was in the church, but I always had a debate. I always had a debate about something. I don't care what somebody said. I don't believe and I don't believe. And so God started teaching me, just go straight by the word and let people have their other part. Here's, here's 11, and you're going to hear from 12 in a minute. So I always like to just use the word of God um, uh, and teach from it. I don't have to prove God anymore. I used to have to prove God. Can you prove there's a God? And I would say to people, yeah, and I would go through all these things to prove, because he woke me up this morning, started me on my way. I was just a teenager, you know, you know, gave me food to eat and, you know, all of that stuff that I heard at church and all that was true. But I just started learning from God, you know, Ricky, just teach my word. And God says, I'll prove myself. And there's a way that God proves us, and there's a way he's asking us now to prove him. So that's how we're in this 90-day uh, Thanksgiving promise. It ends on Thanksgiving morning. So Demond, I didn't know. Stand up again, Demond, from Iowa. He, he, he's here, son. He listens on Sunday mornings, you know, in Iowa. So I want to address all those that are out of town in different states listening because I really didn't realize how focused everybody was in different states listening to our ministry because I don't check algorithms and all of that. I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not an algorithmic pastor. 
if that's a word. Now, that came from the Rixionary. I made that up. So I say that saying that all of you can be a part of this 90 day. I, if you have you say, well, I'll go to the church there. I go to other places. Please, again, I'm going to ask you, uh, if you don't mind, join us. You can sign up today. And I say sign up. There's no registration. Just sign in so I can keep in touch with you. I'm going to ask if you are filming me uh, with your light, turn your light off while you're filming me. If you're playing a video game or something else or have your camera on for other reasons, I see your light. Thank you very much. So can you please either turn it off, turn it down, because it affects me. And, you know, light sometimes can cause things to happen on stage. That's what I heard at a show. It's not really true. I just that's thought I'd say that. You know, I was like, please don't fl take any flash. It can affect the performance of the animals. I just always wanted to say that from the pulpit. So I did, but I just want you all, you know, in respect of the neighbors and people around you, I'm really seriously, because we're gonna use our cell phones in this service a lot in a few minutes. So I always ask that we respectfully, I can't make anyone do anything. We can't demand it, but we can out of respect from the one place that's still left respect and that's the church ask you to to really realize somebody may be watching you so be i'm going to ask you not to use your phones for like video games or things like that now, i am aware that that's a very difficult thing to do with children because in some cases that's what keeps them centered in but if you can as a parent if they have to watch the television screen go to our website right now and let them download service so they can see us and they can still have something to do in service all right, that's just respectfully uh, what we do here. Uh, thanks for your prayers this week. Pray for me right now. If you don't ever pray for the preacher, pray right now. Say, God, just give him. I'm going to tell you what to pray for, too, because I don't need y'all to pray like, Lord, give him another suit next week. Don't, don't pray that prayer like that. You know, but just strength, just strength and endurance. Give me the strength to go past 10 minutes. Amen. They want me to walk 10 minutes. But I want to preach two hours. Now pray right now that I don't preach two hours. Go ahead and tell Jesus. Now don't let him preach. Now don't let him preach two hours, or he's gonna see me walk in ten minutes. You know. So just y'all, y'all keep it real with God. <laughs> Last week we started, and I just did. Is Robo, you ready? So I started, and I took a bunch of seeds, and I'm gonna move forward now. Took a bunch of seeds, and we were talking about the God gives seeds to the sower, and we took a bunch of seeds, and we threw them, and we threw those seeds into a, a little pot that we had here just to show that. Seeds, another word for seeds is what? <clears throat> Money, finances. Another word for seed is what? Thank you, internet boy, you ought to be here. We are right on target. But no, so in the Bible it was talking about seeds, so we use that terminology of seeds to plant because all of us are wanting something and right now we're experiencing what we call a lack. And that's only because we're not sowing so we can receive a harvest. Harvest is what you get after you sow a seed. So you go to the bank, you put money in the bank, the money stays there, you need it, you have it. You come to church, God says, I gave you $10, all I want is my one. See, that 10 is not yours. That 10 was put into your responsibility, into your care. You have nine to deal with, and so that one goes to him. You don't give that to him, he says, now you're stealing. And you're not really stealing just from yourself or from me, you're stealing from yourself because your future now is depending on his trust, your trust in him. So when it seems as if God is not speaking, that means Satan could be speaking louder. I'm going to go into some areas today because I'm sick and tired again of Satan just making us look like spiritual fools. Um, educated, ignorant Christian believers. And so that there are things that the devil is saying, boo, and we're running. He said, boo, and we're running. We have a hallelujah for every boo but we don't know that anymore. Now, because this kind of teaching of God's word is not gonna get you a whole bunch of followers, but it may get God one more believer. And that's really what I'm standing up here for. And I wanna move forward. Um, um, so we planted those seeds. Now, let me just be, I'm gonna be 100% honest. I didn't know what we did. So I put that up here and I never touched it. And I came back the other day and looked, and that seed that we threw in there, it just sprouted up. Now, I promise I did not plan that. Let me tell you what happened. So we had these pinto beans, whole bag of pinto beans, and I was just tossing them around, you know, trying to do, be symbolic of sowing seeds. And I threw one in this thing, in the soil, and then the crazy thing is, I just shoved it down and kept preaching. 
during that sermon, I started throwing a lot of other beads around just to show, you know, that you throw some around. Robo, look in here right quick. Y'all see all these other beans? Okay, see, they've been here at the same time that that one was. It happened all at the same service. They didn't grow up. Why didn't they grow up? Because they weren't planted, they were just thrown. They've been there at the same time. That's the same as some of you say, well, I gave my money in church. I go, no, you threw it, but did you plant it? Did you put it in that basket and say, God, this is what I want? Let me say this. I accidentally just pushed that other seed down. I didn't plant. Y'all saw me. I just went. And some, you got to push down. And I did that. And I wiped my hands off. And I kept on preaching. And then I just put a little water on it. In other words, I tithed it. I offered it. And I let it go. And that was, I don't know when that was, 10 days ago. And so I just, I didn't even know it was in the pulpit. I, I thought it was away. Turned around, looked up there yesterday or Wednesday. I said, whoa, what is, it's grown. And then today it's, it's there. And I still haven't watered it. Today would be the day to water it. But listen to me. I don't want no pinto beans. Now, if this was a Whopper Junior. <laughs> but let me tell you something about your money, your seeds. They are so ignorant. All seeds know to do is grow. And God is saying, I'm putting it in your care. Don't touch it. Don't fool with it. Don't dig it up. And it'll grow. And it's not cute. It's not ugly. It's not enough to make a stew. But it's just enough to show you that it was planted in good soil. You may not be cute, you may not be all those other things, but turn to somebody and say, I'm good soil. All right, thank you. Thank you, Brother Thompson and Sister Thompson for being at church this morning. I'm glad to see you. I saw Mother Hall, Mother Hall, Mother Hall. She make me want to do the walk. Mother Hall, every Sunday, just you are just precious. Thank you so much for being with us again. Today is GP Day. Grandparents, thank you. See, grandkids are proof that we shouldn't have killed our kids. I just like God said, boy, if you just hold on, I got something else for you down the road there, dude. I want to go here today, and I want to read from the Bible, and I want to read the scripture. I want to give us our subject, but I want to go into another area. The next generation that we're dealing with right now, if we don't teach what we know that got us here, um, I have, a, I have a, a word from God that will show you that they're not going to reap the benefits in Christ that we need to. So this is like, I'm going to read from a Generation X, a Z, Gen, Gen Z Bible. Um, have one of our young ladies to read from that Bible. I'm going to read the first King James Version that I'm going to have it read. Some of you, I want you to cut, cut some slack, cut some slack. Okay, don't, don't go into this one right now challenging. Well, that Bible's crazy. It, sound, it, doesn't sound, it doesn't sound like stuff in the Bible, but it sounds like the way we talk. See, because some of y'all, we have church talk, then we have after church talk. This Bible was written in your after church talk. I don't use it as a teaching tool. It's not anything except for what it is, just another interpretation of the Bible. So you can tell we are not some church up here jiving. This is good soil. And sometimes you just got to know, you got to use the word. So I just want you to know that's what we use here. So let's go this morning because we're in a fight. Here's the problem with this fight. We didn't pick it. We were chosen. Okay. And I'm going to stand here like I always do on Sunday morning and say I'm going to stand here. You didn't pick this fight. You were chosen. And I believe that God knew that you wouldn't quit during this fight. You ready? Now, if it gets uncomfortable in here, raise your hand. If it gets too warm, raise your hand. If it gets too cold, all of that, we look for it because we don't want you to, we just want you to know we're looking. We, this is very personal. The large, the church space is large, but our hearts are very close to you, right? So let's go to 1 Timothy 6, 12 through 13. Turn that in your Bible. I'm just going to put a where you're going here, but I'm not going to read it from here yet. 1 Timothy 6, 12 and 13. What it says in your Bible is, 
fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Thereof, thereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickened all things and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. It starts out by saying, fight the good fight of faith. You have seeds in the ground. You have money and offerings that you have given, but you're not fighting for it. You don't believe because you've had so many disappointments, that is so. Now, we're gonna read this from the Gen Z Bible. I want you to listen to the same exact scripture, and then we're gonna to go to another scripture, and then to our subject. Go ahead and let's read. Morgan's gonna help me here this morning, go ahead. First Timothy chapter six, verse 12. Keep on fighting the good fight of faith. Grab hold of that eternal life that you've been called to, and make sure everyone knows you're repping the truth. Verse 13, I'm telling you this in front of God who gives life to everything and in front of Jesus Christ who straight up confessed his truth to point his pilot. Okay, now let's go to the next verse that we're gonna read this morning that we're gonna teach from and that's gonna be 2 Timothy 4, 2, 5. Now we're gonna read that strictly from the Gen Z Bible. Now remember, this is not the way you're normally used to the Bible sounding, but I'm not talking to, I'm talking to Mother Hall, but I'm not talking to Mother Hall's generation now. I'm talking to Sister Divine, who's celebrating six floor, six room today. But I'm not talking to her generation. Right now we're talking to the generation coming afterwards. Grandparents Day, we now grandparents have to tell the next generation coming after us how we got here. They don't have to pick cotton. We picked the cotton. No, we wore the cotton. I didn't even pick the cotton. You get it? They don't have to have a horse and a mule and all that. We have Mustangs that we drive. You get it? So there are some things you don't have to repeat. But what if we don't know what to expect? You're going to be repeating. Somebody's going to walk up to you in a few minutes with a chain and a whip and say, Pow, get in the back of that car. And you don't know your rights. So that's why we're reading like this. We have to show you. We hear how you're talking, but we got to tell you about the fight you're in that you didn't pick. It's not fair. They're picking on me because they're racist. They're not necessarily racist. They're on assignment. You, tra you translate it as racist. The Holy Spirit calls it demonic. And you are fighting races and devils whooping your behind. And when all the races are dead, you can't recognize them because now you don't know who's racist, but you ought to recognize what's demonic. You don't know what's man or what's woman, but you ought to recognize what, what's God. Okay, here we go. God did not ask me to add numbers to the church. He said he would add to the church daily. So I'm done with trying to compete with who doesn't come to church anymore. I don't have much time to sit here and talk and play like I got another marathon to run. I got to finish the marathon I started. Now, with all that said, here's the next verse. Read for us, baby, 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 5. I didn't even want to read it because my voice don't even match this. Verse 2. Spread the word no matter what time it is, even if it's not convenient. Call what, 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 what? That's your, that's your charge right there, young people. Young adults, there it is right there. He said it right there. And it's in the Bible. Okay, say it again. I'm going to stop you a couple of times, but, but only two. Only maybe two. Go, <laughs> go again. Verse 2, spread the word no matter what time it is, even if it's not convenient. Call people out. Correct them. Motivate them with patience and solid teaching. Bup, 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 bup. Call them out and do what? Correct them. Don't call them out in front of them. Right. This generation, when I can say what's on my mind, the word said, okay, call them out and then do what? What is it? Do what? Correct them. Correct them. If you don't have a solution, shut your mouth for a minute. Hello. Because then they're going to challenge you. And then after they challenge you, you're going to say, well, you don't do it. And then they're going to get up in your face. And now they're going to break your Christian code. Because they're going to call you names that you're not. And then you're going to call them names that they didn't know you knew. And now you got two fools fighting and somebody passes by and they don't know which one's the real fool. Start over, read it again. They didn't hear that part. <laughs> read, that, read that again. Verse 2. Spread the word. No Bam. matter. Spread the word, no matter what time it is, even if it's not convenient. 
Call people out, correct them, motivate them with patience and solid teachings. Verse three, brace yourself, because there will come a time when people won't put up with sound teachings anymore. Nah. Uh, 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 brace yourself, grandparents. There will come a time, here we are, where people are not going to put up with sound teachings. You can't tell me what that Bible says. That's the white man's Bible. So now we got to make things up to sound like it's from God so people can think we're spiritual. Keep going, baby. Brace yourself, because there'll, com there'll come a time when people won't put up with sound teachings anymore. Nah, they'll just follow their own desires and surround themselves with teachers who will tell them what they want to hear. Verse 4, they'll straight up ignore the truth and get caught up in some made-up stories. Verse 5, mm. but you, stay alert and tough it out. Even wait, wait. Verse 4 said what? Verse 4 said, they'll straight up ignore the truth and get caught up in some made-up stories. And verse 5? But you. You. Stay verse 5? You. You. Say, that's me. me. Now, here are your instructions. Go, but you, what? But you, stay alert and tough it out. Tough it out. Even through tough times, keep doing your evangelist thing and fully showing your ministry skills. Now, the Bible just explains it itself. See, that was just straight word of God. Our subject this morning is simple. How to start a good fight. The word said, fight the good fight of faith. Now, the subject today we want to talk about is how to start a good fight. First of all, let me tell you, a good fight is a fight you win. It's never a good fight if you don't win. It was just a fight. But now let's talk about this. Let's, let's talk about how to start a good fight. I'm gonna say three quick things to you. I think the, to start a good fight uh, is to, first of all, you gotta have the talk to go with it. Hey. Now I know you're saved now, but you, you used to fight. And um, you fought until you started losing. And once you started losing, you started arguing. And now you fuss with your mouth because you don't trust your strength anymore. Oh, come on, y'all. I'm talking Jesus stuff for it. So in the natural, that's how you do it. So in order to, to, to start a good fight, you got to talk it. But, but if you're a believer, you got you to gotta talk God talk. You can't, you can't talk street talk. We, how many of y'all know street talk? Okay, okay. But let, no, for real, hold your hand up. I want people to see who they sit next to. Because you live, you, you live now. I don't know where live now. I don't know how to spell live now. But you, but you live in there, you live in there, say something sitting there, and they'll go, well, she said she knew street talk. <laughs> so you might be sitting by somebody in a minute that might not say amen, they might say something else, and you go, whoa. <laughs> okay, so how many of you know street talk? Now, I'm going to ask this question, I don't want to take away from anybody. Put it down. How many of you are really decorated thugs? <laughs> Put it down, I'm going to ask again. Because, see, remember, you almost said something just then. What? I didn't say how many of you have not been to college and have degrees. I mean, I get that. I, something, how many of you are decorated thugs? Wait, put that, put that down. That means that if you got to get ugly, you know how to. You have grown to not act the fool. You know how to put your makeup on. You know how to wear your hair. You know how to go to Jenny's and make your hair go from five inches to 36 inches. You know how to put on eyelashes so thick that you can't wear your glasses. You know how to put on lipstick to smile. You know how to do all that. You know how to do but, but it. But if you mess with me, I can go into some areas that you wouldn't recognize. How many of you are decorated? The thugs. Okay, keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. Look around. Look around. Look around. No, look for real. I didn't know that about her. She don't look like that. That's because she has learned how to start a good fight. He doesn't look like. Now, now some of these we still working on right here. We still. That's why we're down in the front right now. Cause. Okay, so so you are now. I'm talking to people who know how to talk the talk, and I'm talking to some decorated thugs. I didn't say you weren't a Christian or a believer. I said decorated. Sometimes people pick on you because you don't look like you can fight. Number three. Now that was number one, how to start a fight. You gotta talk how to talk it. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, don't start one. Number two, don't start one, and don't start one unless you can win. 
Don't start a fight unless you know you're going to win. Otherwise, keep your talk game going. You get extra mad after you start a fight and then later on realize, I look so stupid after that. <laughs> Number three, if you're gonna start a good fight, and I don't have these written up because I do not want to put up instructions on this. <laughs> but number three, you gotta have you some backup. If you're gonna start a good fight, don't go out there by yourself. Hey man, get you some folk to walk with you. Get you some folk to, to back you up. Now they may not do anything, but they give you this confidence. All right, so, so now we're in this fight against Satan, and I'm gonna go into an area because I am very, I, I, I know a lot about this, and I'm just telling you right now, I'm, at, I'm mad at the devil uh, for robbing people when he doesn't have any power. I'm mad at the devil, and I may, you might wanna put this in your notes and say it to yourself later on this week. I'm mad at the devil for robbing people when he doesn't have any power. He doesn't have the power to rob you. You have lost your peace of mind. You have lost your sanity. You have lost your dignity. What happened to your self-respect? What happened to your respect, period? What happened to you being wanting to be a lady? Your grandmother didn't raise you the way you're acting right now. You became somebody else you saw. You never saw your grandma drop it like it's hot and pull up her skirt and you ready to fight somebody. You never heard her cuss nobody out. You, you didn't hear it. You never, you never saw your grandfather act like a nun gentleman even after people treated him bad and said horrible things to him, called him out of his name, gave him jobs that had no pay, but he still had to provide. You never heard him saying this is too much work. and this is too, he, You heard him say thank you for giving me a chance. At least if I don't have but this much, I'm going to still feed my kids. I'm going to still feed my family. I'll go without a meal, but I'll provide for them. That's what we heard. And I'm tired of the devil. I'm mad at him. I'm not tired. I'm mad. I'm mad. I was tired. And the guy said, God, give me strength because I, I can't do what I need to do. If I'm tired or weak, I need strength. But I had to admit at one point in my life that I was too weak to do this by myself. And I said, I'm mad at the devil for robbing people when he doesn't have any power. Do you know that the devil is a deceiver? He's a tricker. He will fool you. Now, either Jesus paid for our healing on the cross or he didn't. He did it as far as I'm concerned. What amazes people is how we can talk about the healings of Jesus and they see us still walking as if we're affected by it. The things that have been attacking our bodies, attacking our minds. We've learned to walk in healing even when we don't feel like it. And it settles my heart and my mind as far as I'm concerned. It's a matter of fact that when, when, when it got settled in my heart that God still heals people today, that God still heals our hearts, that God still sets people free. It settled in my heart, and that's why now I said, Lord, I want to walk healed. I want to walk healthy. I want to be prosperous. And me preaching like that at an early age, me talking like this at an early age, this very talk, this very conversation that I'm having with you is the kind of stuff that got me kicked out of most preacher's clubs. I'm not in a preacher's club. And I know a lot of you preachers are listening because you're going to use this message later on. It happens. Ain't nothing I can do about it. But I don't, I, I'm not a part of any preacher's association because I just specifically want to make sure that we understand that as far as we're concerned, when the Lord died for our salvation, our healing, that was a fact. Satan's going to attack us every day of our lives because God knows that we are worthy, but Satan thinks we're stupid and dumb that we don't know. And you preach that enough, people will kick you out. And you have never learned how to walk with strength until you learn to walk by yourself. But if you're going to start a fight, you got to have somebody with you. And God said, Lord, I'll be with you always, dude. As a matter of fact, if it weren't for me and your stand for Jesus, you wouldn't be where you are right now. I also found out that it was God's will for me to have power in my life. I just didn't know that. I always associated power with people that had money, that had prestige, people that were great looking, people that had houses and families, and especially if they were married and had children. I associated that with power. And so I saw a lot of people who wanted those things in life and they got those things. And I didn't know that I had power. And I didn't have to be this little weakling. When I found out that God 
it was his will. That means he wanted me to have power. I didn't have to walk around like a little wimp anymore. And some people say, well, you never know what God might do. But I know what God's going to do. You can say that all you want to. I'm not going to be one. You never know what God might do. That's where we've come down to now, y'all. We used to know what God's going to do. What's God going to do? He's going to do exactly what his word says he's going to do. But if you don't know the word, you don't know what he's going to do. If you don't know his word, you don't know what God's going to do. And that's why we have so many copies of the word, because somewhere in this contract, it tells you exactly what God's going to do. He's going to speak to a seed. A seed's going to go in the ground. You don't bother. God said, I got a contract with the dirt and the seed to give you a harvest. You don't know what God's going to do. I do know what God's going to do. But I got to talk to him enough to know what he's going to do. Let me let that settle in. Does it sound like I'm being aggressive to you? Faith cometh by what? So I got to push it in now. It's got to push past a whole lot of media stuff. It's got to push past a whole lot of demonic stuff. It's got to push past a whole lot of it's time to go home. So I got to push this into you now. Because if faith cometh by hearing, some things have to be pushed out. And another thing in God's word has to be pushed in. Because now we're in another fight for our lives. I refuse to let Satan steal anything from me anymore. He's not stealing our children. He's not stealing our families. He's not robbing from me. He's not robbing from you. He's not stealing our jobs. Sometimes we get around this, and all of this represents religion to a lot of people. And religion will teach you. It will teach you how to be sick. It'll teach you how to be sick. And this mistake has even kind of crept into a lot of what I'm going to call um, charismatic churches. We are a charismatic church, by the way. Charismatic. Somebody say, say that's right. <laughs> See, charismatic people talk like that. They just, charismatic people say, yeah, I don't mind y'all knowing I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a decorated thug. <laughs> yeah, I used to be. I used to be, but now I'm, you know, I once was lost, but now I'm, I was lost, I was blind, but now, see, that's, that's, that's change. Charismatic people, we talk back. We, we speak up. But all of a sudden now, not all of a sudden, in the last generation, it's like he's made us think that we have to be sick and broke down a lot in order to get people to view us and for us to be transparent. We're now looking for people to like us and not for God to power us. And it's a deceptive lie. Did you know that the church you go to right now could be a matter of life or death for you? You need to go to a church where the Bible and victory are preached and not a diet of unbelief. Am I bringing down anybody else's church? No. If we're doing that, that's, I'm just letting you know, whoever you are with the internet, you're in the right church, wherever you are. But you can't keep associating, putting your seeds into soils of unbelief. And we need to stop being shocked when something good happens. We need to be grateful before we see it. And it's going to be a little quiet this morning because the seed is being planted again now. Because we're going to have to start building this good fight. For 90 days, everything you know about Satan's going to challenge it. I want to look at a scripture this morning in 1 Corinthians 11th chapter, the 23rd and 22nd, 23rd and 25th verse. We know this scripture. But watch this. I want to just share with you because when I start talking about healing and I start talking about us being delivered from things, I promise you the first thing that people do is look at us. And if you look at me and study me, me physically, you're going to say, I think he's being a little hypocritical. Or if it works, why is he going through that? Watch this. Let me just hush this for a second. I'm going to take you to the word on it. Because it works, I'm going through that. People that I trust with how I am, I ask them, how was I walking today? What did I look like when I just stood up a few minutes ago? How is my moving? Because anyone who knows me knows by now, I'd be up and down these stairs about 15 times. And I would be, but y'all still want to get out of church before 3 o'clock. I didn't say I would go fast, but I, you know. And so now, Dwayne, when you start claiming being healed, people are saying, oh, God bless you from the car accident. So why are you walking like this now? Well, because I could be laying out as one of Clifton's customers. Watch this. Somebody said, I looked at my hands. 
and my hands look new. I didn't say they weren't wrinkled. I looked at my hands at 10, and then I looked at my hands at 40. You don't like that? I started to walk. Y'all remember hearing that stuff? And I had a what? Boy, this generation don't even know to finish that one. They said, I looked at my hands, my hands looked new, I looked at my feet, and they did too. I started to talk, I had a brand new talk. I started to walk, I had a brand new walk. See, you got a different walk at 60 than you had at 13. We just kept thinking that we had one year to get the brand new walk. See, I was in therapy the other day and I said, wow, look at me, I got a brand new walk every other step, <laughs> but I got a brand new walk because I didn't walk like that. However, I still have a renewed strength. I got a brand new walk, but I got a different strength. Don't be afraid of your new walk. Guess what? Some people don't want to walk with you on your new walk because your old walk would make you walk all night. Your new walk might be limited to about 15 minutes, but it's your new walk. If you learn to thank God in your new walk, I'm, sorry, I'm not sorry, but now I got to go to the Bible and show you this. Because all this, it just sounds like some other stuff that could be a great Instagram moment. And that's not what I'm trying to do. So let's go to one of these Bibles. And those over there. 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 25. Watch, you've heard this before. For I have received of the Lord. Are y'all with me? That which, was, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Y'all kind of remember this already now? And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Y'all heard that part so far? Then what does he say right there? This do what? In remembrance of me. After this manner, he also took what? He took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink. Did it say on first Sunday? Did it say every Tuesday? Did it say every day? As often as you do it. But when you do it, do it. This do what? In remembrance. I'm trying to get. I got some people that really are interested in learning now. He said, do this and do that in remembrance of me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, remembrance means to remind or to call to mind or to believe something. In remembrance of me, it doesn't mean in memory of me. A, a lot of people take communion in memory of poor old Jesus. Don't say poor Jesus, because right now he's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's, he passed his test. He passed his test. What Jesus is saying is that we are to renew our minds and put ourselves in remembrance of what has already been provided. You got to remember, some things are going to happen to you, but it's already been taken care of. And one of the things that Jesus had provided is that he stripped Satan of all the power and the authority that Satan had. And every time the devil whips me or gets on my case, I got to go in remembrance that's already been paid for. I got to remember, I got to, re I'm sitting here acting like I got to suffer. It might hurt, but it's been paid for. Do this in remembrance. And we're, we're, we're not a spiritually ignorant church, so we write stuff. I'm sorry, y'all. We, we write. One of the things that Jesus provided is that we, he stripped Satan of all of his power and authority. So what's Satan going to do? Pick a fight with you to see if you know your rights. How many of you know that you're men? I'm going to ask that a little faster. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I, just, no, I just want you to answer faster. I can't ask it fast. How many of you know that you're men? So if Satan comes to you now and tells you you're a woman, you're not going to fool with fighting with him because you already know this. You've been given power and authority to tell him you don't have to go to a thug, but you know this. 
you have proof. But if Satan can make you not have proof or make you doubt it, then he'll stay right by you. So we have to know we have power and authority. So if this is the truth, Pastor Rush, and Satan's been fooling with me, where does Satan get his power today? He gets his power from you and me. We say Satan is mighty powerful nowadays. You know why? He got that power from you and I. How did he get that power from you and I? He's a thief. He stole it. Who's been given power and authority? So if Satan has power, he stole it from? God didn't give him power. He gave us power. So if Satan wants power, he's got to get you. I sit over here and sing a song that y'all don't recognize. Let me just let that sink in. I'm going to show you all this in the Bible now because this just sounds like this is what Pastor Russ said. No, this is not what Pastor Russ said. This is the word of God. So where does Satan get his power? Where does he get his authority? Where does he get that ability to fool with us? From, from us. Satan is a leech. Y'all know what a leech is? It's a blood sucker. He's a blood sucker. And the Bible says that he goes around as a roaring lion. He is not a lion, but he goes around like a roaring lion. In other words, he goes around in intimidating or imitating a lion. And when you see a lion, a lion, <laughs> Satan is a ventriloquist. He can sound like the truth. <laughs> he can sound like somebody else, but he can't sound like you if he can't use your voice. The Bible said, the pastor didn't say, that he goes around as a roaring lion and his roar can be very loud. That was a revival. This happened in real life. In the, about about in, the 19, in the 50s, between the 50s and 60s, I was reading about it and, and they were having a healing service. And a healing service is where people come down and they believe God in the presence of other people for their healing. They don't have money, so they don't come down to bring money. They came down to bring an issue, and God would use a man of God, a woman of God, to lay hands on them and pray with them. And it still happens today. Except now we want virtual healing. And healing has been virtual ever since we started. It's always been through the air. It's always come out of the invisible. That was a little too deep right there, but I won't... And so these two ladies went down and prayed because they had cancer. And one of the women resisted his tricks when she said, they said she had cancer, what she did by resisting. She said, in the name of Jesus, I don't. Somebody say that with me. In the name of Jesus, I don't. Say it again. In the name of Jesus, I don't. But the woman, the other woman that was with her, both of them had cancer. This is a true story. It's not a thing. The other woman that was with him said, well, I guess I, guess I didn't receive my healing because she didn't feel that. Because sometimes when people pray for you, you don't feel anything. Okay, come on, let me pray for you. And then we go, okay, you through? All right, thank you. I don't feel, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't jerk. I didn't shake. My eyes didn't roll up. I can't do that. No. My eyes didn't roll up in the back of my head. I, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't get cold chills. My fingernails didn't turn blue. My tongue didn't twist on. Uh, I didn't do any of that. <laughs> Sometimes we pray, we just look, okay, I don't feel good. I don't feel any different. But that other woman that said, you know, I guess I didn't receive my healing, this is true. When an autopsy was done and performed, they couldn't find not one trace of cancer in her body though. You know what that woman, she died from assumptions. The devil killed that lady with, a, with, with symptoms. He just kept putting symptoms on her. And that's how he tricks most of us. Put yourself in remembrance of what Jesus did. Come on, let me teach you something right now. Let's speak together. Say, in the name of Jesus, 
I resist the symptoms. Say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the symptoms. So, okay, you got bad credit. Say, I, res I, re I rebuke the symptoms. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. You're going to lose your job. I rebuke the symptoms. See, all Satan can do is get us to agree. She said, well, I guess I didn't receive. Bam, that's why she didn't, because she said that he doesn't have power until we give him power. How do we give him power? By our speech. Watch what you say. He doesn't know how to answer your prescription if you don't say it. I'm so mad I ain't never speaking to him again. Oh, no. You meant I don't want to be around him. The devil will give you a stroke and take away your speech. Just because you said, I don't want to speak to him no more. Let me let that sink in. And anybody that can leave, you got time to leave. We're going to do offering in a minute. Let's do that right now. You understand that? Whatever could be wrong with you is a result of what you said. Satan can't do anything, but you keep having these symptoms, which is the reason why when you go take an x-ray sometimes, an MRI, go to the doctor, they still can't find nothing because symptoms can't be traced. What if you're already healed and you still feel like you don't? The reason they can't find it is because the healing has already manifested. <laughs> What's wrong? I don't know, but it's already done. Why are you walking like that? This is how it ended up. Now, if you want a straighter walk, tell God I want a straighter walk. Is this blessing anybody but me? So that woman died from symptoms. When we're, we're not to go back and remember what Jesus did on the cross and then holler poor Jesus. That's not what we're supposed to do. And, and what the Lord is saying here is put yourself in remembrance of what I provided. I've already done it. And, and, and don't forget the manner of man you are. God has provided healing for us in our bodies and given us power and deliverance. He said, you have that in my name. Repeat after me, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every time you write a check, every time you put money in anything, put it there in the name of Jesus. If you don't put it there in the name of Jesus, that means that Satan could have an opportunity to snatch it away. Are you all still with me? Okay, and we're still on time because we're still breathing. So, Let's look at another scripture that's going to show you. Because again, I don't want this to just be some motivational message. I need every man of God in this house, every woman of God in this house, every grandparent in this house, everybody who's had surgery, everybody who has a limp, everybody who has high blood pressure, fever, stress, uh, diabetes, headaches, stroke symptoms, heart disease. I need us to listen now. Everybody's looking up cures on the internet. And before there was an internet, it had already been written. I am not against you looking up cures on the internet. And I'm not against nothing. I, I just am for. I don't, I don't want to get into the against. But I'm telling you what we're for. God sent this text and said in a few years, it'll mean something to you. At 15, that doesn't mean anything to you. But when you, when you were 15, I heard Brother Fletcher I'm just gonna tell this right quick, off script. We were in the elevator and he was singing, God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. I turned around and said, boy, you learned that when you were a little bitty boy. He didn't think I heard him. He was kind of doing that, you know, that on the low voice. You know. That's when, you know when he learned that song? See, I told him, I didn't, he, I'm just saying. I said, you learned that when you were on the back row. Touching little girls. 
trying to act like you're smoking. But your mama made you get your behind, that's what you, your behind, your butt in church. And you were sitting there slouching mad and didn't want to be there. But that word, <laughs> that's what I told him, I'm just going to tell you. I said that word was in you. And you didn't realize until you were almost 50 years old that God has smiled on me. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? See, it's going in, but you don't know it until mama's dead, dad's not around, you grown person, you're going through something, and then you start to remember, he has set me. Are y'all getting it? Now, are y'all getting this? Anybody want to holler out one that you heard real quick? We're going to stop here in a second because I got to do something else before we finish the sermon. Does any, you want to holler out one of yours? With my mind. Hold on a second. Look at all the decorated thugs singing that. We haven't been singing that song at IBOC. You heard that at Greater Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church of God in Christ of the First Lutheran Latter-day 15th Seventh-day Adventist Church of God in Christ Pentecostal Temple Number 66. But you heard it. Anybody got no? You got one. Uh oh. Anybody ask you? That's what he said. Where? Wait, wait, you gotta get that going. Where I'm going? When? Soon. Not right now, though. So we'll start right there. I don't want to play. I don't play that song. Not, not that soon. Not that soon. So you were sitting up in church with your back behind on the back row, chilling, sleep from Saturday night. But the spirit of the Lord was still working through your mama, your grandparents. Give me another one of those songs real quick. Come here real quick. And you were singing what you, huh? My victory today. Hey, ah, that's when you got slapped on that one. Cause you start dancing, victory. Then they went to joy his mind and you got up. Joe, sit down, boy. <laughs> yeah, you start doing that thing, then, ah, ah, and then, then that's when you got slapped in church right there. Okay, let's do this real quick. Let's do this real quick, because this now is what I'm trying to show you, that if we sow this, you don't see this when you're smaller but it's gonna have a harvest. We got five buckets up at the front. We got buckets on each seat right now. We're gonna stop right now. Church is not over here at Ibuck. This is where we stop and do our offering. Why? Why? Because right now, I wanna make sure that every seed that you plant, every thought that you need, every prayer you need answered, we do it corporately and we do it together. Nobody walks out the door, is the sermon over? No, I gotta to go to Luke 11 right quick. So we're gonna talk while you are giving. This is where you give your tithes, give your offerings, show your expressions of love. The baskets are here. It's not going to take but two minutes. We don't, we don't waste time on this because it's, it's not a joke for us. It's not a game. So right now, those of you who have electronic giving, you turn your phones on. I'll give you a chance to power up. Please don't walk out the doors on us right now, brothers. If you got to go, just sit, squat where you are. We are not done at church here. But there are too many people who are discouraged from giving because People, preachers, teachers, all of us let you go when God is saying, wait a minute, I've been talking to a seed in your pocket, in your account. They have an appointment with me to grow. But you didn't get to plan it. I know you got to go to work. Key word, work. What if there was no work? There would be no expectation. What if there was no got to go somewhere? That means God may not have answered. But we have to get a word before and during. So if you are a tither or a giver right now, there's two buckets coming around. That red one will say, Pastor, I want to just thank you today, either on Cash App or some kind of way, by putting something in that red bucket. That's how the church has decided years ago that we would compensate the pastor. And that's the money that goes to the preacher. That's the money that helps us when others are sick. 
that I can personally say, here, here's some gas, here's some something. If I want to, because it's whose money? Mine, all mine. <laughs> victory today. Yeah. But if I want more victory, I got to give more. That's, how, that's the way I live. I'm not telling you that. That's the way I live. So that black bass bucket that you're going to see is going to pass by. We're not going to stop because I'm going to keep right while you're doing it. We're teaching this culture how to do it. And do not drop baskets. Do not drop. Get you another section to sit in if the person going to drop your rent. Say, I don't want to sit in this section because this lady keep dropping my rent every week. She, okay, we need to have basket holders and, and, and stick it, stick them or Velcro or something. So when that basket passes your way, don't let that pass by. That's you saying, goodbye, car note. Bye-bye, tree house. I didn't water you. You had the opportunity, but you didn't water it. You just let it pass. Stop it right there in Jesus' name. We're going to speak to our seeds in a minute so that when it passes by, all you do is put yours in the basket. Or if you have your phone, just tap it with your phone. You've already given on Giblify. You, you, or if you don't, load it up on your phone. Now, if this sounds like a gimmick to some of you, don't participate in it. If you're going to get put out this week, don't put that in here. Go on and pay your rent. Because we don't want to anoint thieves. Don't steal from the rent people. Don't steal from the light bill people. Well, Pastor, if I give my offer today, we're going to get put out. Well, don't do it. We'll sow a seed for you. So this is not some trick. And I've never heard of it done in the middle of a sermon. But if we can't preach God's deliverance, what are we doing? I just want to give you a chance to do it. All right? So when I say now, I want you to talk to your seed. This is how we do it. House, car, or whatever it is. You know, grandson, granddaughter. In Jesus' name, I claim victory, Lord, over all the seeds that I've sown. And I pray in Jesus' name that these seeds are watered. And as these offerings come by, I water my seed. And that's the guarantee between you and God. And you let that basket pass by. You put it in. Or if you have a cell phone, and I don't, you just, some people, I just learned this from church. I don't know. Some people in our church, they just tap the basket. And you don't have to tap the basket. But they do just to, just to show others around because other people are watching. Do you give? Yes, we give. Thieves are watching. There are some look at crooks in here. This is a church. Trying to see what we want. We got crooks and security, just by the way. <laughs> Amen. We got anointed people and sharpshooters, just in case you're looking. <laughs> okay, you don't know who's who. Okay, but uh, that tap was for the Lord. All right, I'm just saying. So when you load it up on Givelify, you set it and forget it. If you want to tithe every week, set it and forget it. When does the tithe do? Whenever you get paid. All right? So when I say now, you just pray right there within yourself, not out loud. Lord, I want to thank you for my Rolls Royce. Don't say that to us. That's between you and Lord. Lord, I thank you for my Rolls Royce in Jesus' name and my rent and all the things that, you know, all of my debts and bills. And then you just say that to yourself. There needs to be some mumbling happening in this house. And then when I say amen, the baskets are going to come. They're going to come fast too. You're not going to get to hold the basket where you are. And Father, no, child. Somebody else's stuff is in there. And by the way, on your row, watch your blessing go down. When it comes to you, you keep listening to me. But look, look at it. Make sure nobody, uh, 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 we don't do change. <laughs> Repeat after me. Say, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> we don't do change. He changed me. Okay, that's the only change. All right. So, so let's make giving fun. And let's get back to the sermon. Is that okay? That's okay. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, everyone in this room has a personal request. They have a personal demand. And Lord, some are praying for health and strength. Some are debt. Some are family situations. You know what it is. And he or she is talking to you right now. Thank you, God, for giving us this unusually odd opportunity for some people to stop and honor you. We worship you like now. Like now we worship you in offering. Just like some people worship you in songs and some worship in prayer and they fall on their knees and they cry. But right now, God, we worship together in obedience toward sowing seeds to get us out and move us into our next areas of life. In Jesus' name. Now you go ahead and pray yours if you need to. Just tell him thank you. You do yours. It's okay. This is all about training now. When I say amen, the baskets will move and I'll keep teaching. In Jesus' name, everybody say in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Okay, now go real quick, 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 quick. All right, now, we're talking about power and authority. During power and authority, let's look at Luke, the 10th chapter. And some of us are familiar with it, some of us are not. So here's what we're, we're saying now. Remember, real quick, this is the end of the sermon. Satan comes along and he makes you think you don't have power and authority. So, uh-uh, uh focus on the word, guys. We got to focus on the word. Shh, no, ushers, let's don't talk. Ushers, let's not talk to him. We got to focus on the word. All right, that's a very personal thing right here. This is like somebody asking you about your undergarment. Don't talk to him about that. Okay, so look, look closely while, and the basket's going to come to you, and you just thank God for it. So, what happens is when we start operating in power and authority, some people say, I'm losing my mind. You know why you're losing your mind? You said you're losing your mind. So now Satan cannot take your mind, but he can answer your thought through a complaint and give you the symptoms that you are what? Losing your mind. Why? Because he heard what you said. What he can do is get us to say things. Now, we may be around friends and people who want us to talk tough and talk bad. We don't have to do that, y'all. We used to. But he died for that. And after the day, you're going to realize that. So here's what happened. He had 70 disciples. Okay, I'm going to pretend that's them. Um, all of you guys stand up right here. Now, everybody watch them. They're on program. So all of those disciples, y'all help Brother Thompson stand up. Amen. There you go. So all of these guys, Jesus said, now I give you power and authority. And they went out and they were listening to Jesus. Come and walk like this. These guys were walking, going everywhere with Jesus, going everywhere. And the Bible says that when they went out, because they had been with Jesus, they were able to do some stuff. Now watch this. They were able to what? 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 Able to do some stuff. Why am I saying this? Because bam, it's right there in the word. The Bible says, and the 70 return again with what? 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 Do it. See, they didn't come back like, dog. Let me see dog. Dog. Let me see joy. Let me see dog. Let me see joy. Let me see dog. Let me see joy. Dog. Joy. Dog. Joy. Dog. Joy. Dog. Joy. Dog. 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 Right. Okay. You got So they came to Jesus with what? Joy. How do I say this? It's right there in the word. But what did they say? Lord, even the devils, even the devils, demons, all that junk are subject unto us through the only reason Satan knows what to do to us is because we use your name. They said what? In the name of of Jesus. It's right there in the word. Demons were cutting up, but they said they do whatever we say if we say it in your name. Come on, babies, here we go. Come on. Look, take your right hand and, and wave toward that door. Say, by offering. Okay, don't talk to that no more. That's over. Just get, get ready to welcome your harvest on that side. Hey, hey, like that. That's how you do that. All right, so. This is for you personally, sitting in your seat. Devils did what they said because they used what? They used what? The internet? Instagram? Oh, TikTok. What do they use? The name of Jesus. What are you going to use? All right. So he said, they said, through your name, through your name. There were 70 came back and said, through your name, devils did what we say. Have a seat. I remember when we were growing up, I don't have one with me now. We had a little badge, Long Ranger badge. And we walk into the projects. You arrested. You arrested. All we did was show them that what? Badge. That badge meant you had power and authority. 
Sometimes walking down the street, you can have an undercover cop, but if you pull out that badge, you don't care about him wearing blue jeans and khakis. You respect that what? I don't care what you're wearing in here right now. I don't care what your past. When you use that name, devils say, oh, that fool right there. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, Brother Scott, real quick, run up here and punch me in the gut. Sometimes you see it coming and punch me. Come on, kid, punch me in the gut. In the name of Jesus. Stop. Bam. He, was, he had his momentum going. Did I swell up and what, 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 what? I just said that name. And that name, every demon recognized it and backed off. This is not old school teaching. This is brand new anointing on somebody who's not going to be coward and punk enough to use his name. Thank you. Now, let's go back and show you the same thing. Let's go to the 18th verse. Y'all want some 18? You want some 18 for real? Okay, so verse 18. And he said to them, let me tell you what. Ooh, I'm going to put myself on the time limit because we got marriage enrichment at 2 o'clock. He said to them, Jesus is talking. Okay, okay, before I say that, let me tell y'all, let me let y'all in on something. Satan used to be in heaven. That's where he started. He started out with God. Somebody say, you mean God made Satan? As bad as Satan is? God made you as bad as you are. <laughs> I put it a different way. Your mama and daddy made you. And you got to be a little old and start smelling yourself. And your mama and daddy had to kick you out, just like God kicked Adam and Eve out. Before he kicked Adam and Eve out, he kicked Satan out. See, either you're going to stay or you're going to get kicked out. I'm just trying to tell you. But let me show you what Jesus said when they came back with power and authority. Look at how this is a, you, you want some Bible? You want some word? That's all we teach you. Verse 18 says what? Jesus said, I, that's Jesus talking, beheld who? Satan. Just like lightning, I saw him what? It's right there in the word. So in order to fall from heaven, he had to first be where? And Jesus said that he saw it. Why did Jesus see it? Because he's of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He was there in the beginning when he said, let us make men. Who was us? Us was Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit. Been with God the whole time. Was there when Satan got evicted. And y'all, am I going too fast? Is this too much? It's right there in the Bible. So if Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit kicked him out, they didn't give him the key. They evicted him and took away his power and authority. When you, when you put your sons out, you tell them, your daughter, give me my key. Because the key, the key mean business now. And if you're dating somebody or married somebody, give me back my remote. The remote? They ain't got no more news for you. The remote means this, this is it. He kicked him out. And what does the scripture say? Is everybody all right? Yeah. And then Jesus said, behold, I took the key from Satan, but behold, I'm now giving unto you stand up again. He said, I took it from Satan, but I'm giving it to you. And what am I giving you? the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over what? Oh, anybody, y'all with me? Over what? All the power of the enemy. So now I'm giving you the power. Y'all run up here real quick. Everybody, come on, quick, 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 real, real fast. In the name of Jesus, stop. I'm giving you the power over all these jokers. And nothing shall by any means Y'all making me work for it, but I I don't believe in no devil. Don't matter if you believe it. He believes in you. <laughs> and if you use the name of Jesus, that choker's going to back up. Why will he back up? Because the Lord has taken his power. But who did he give the power to? So why are we walking around powerless? 
because we haven't learned that we have power. That's why we have to go out and fight in the streets, answer stuff on the internet, act the fool with people that we don't see because we don't believe God's got it. Look at all these demons that have been shut down. I didn't touch a single one. I never came out of my clothes. I never cursed. I never raised my voice. I never pointed to him. I just used the name of Jesus. And then he says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Let's, 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 let's separate this word. What is this? No. What's this? Now say, no thing. <laughs> no thing shall hurt. Can I get some people with joy to just say, no thing shall hurt me? Why are you saying that? That sounds so conceited. You don't know what God's going to do. Ah! <laughs> yes, I do, fool. You don't know, but I know. I made it to church that Sunday. Now, this doesn't guarantee that other people won't mistreat you. They got to do what they got to do. They working. They want to look at that. Look at all the people working for the enemy. See, all these people were working for the enemy, and then they started to follow Jesus. And when they went to Jesus, they were given power and authority, and they retrieved and went back to their seats. And so when it was time to go out and fool with folk that were full of devils, they used what they had been taught. And they said all these things, and all means everything, all power, the whole thing, everything, and nothing shall by any means whew, hurt you. It's 1227. Can y'all give me three minutes to say this last part? And we'll come back in here tomorrow and get the rest of this. See, what you don't want to do is be one of those people who get this and go out and use it and then get jumped on and killed by Satan because you didn't finish your instructions. All right. I want you to read it out loud, everybody. Everybody, let's read it together. Ready? Go. What's this word? Say it again. One more time. That's what he gives us. He gave us, see, your mama said, give me the whole key to the house. As a matter of fact, give me the one to the screen too. Now you got how many keys? All the keys. You got all the keys. And, and how, how many, you, you no, mama got all the keys and you have what? None. And how did you get back in the house the next time? Somebody in the house had to let you in. You remember talking to Ther Teresa? Open the door. <laughs> mama said, come on, y'all play Teresa for a minute. What mama said? Mama said, don't let you in this house. <laughs> come on, Teresa. I just want to get my shoes. See, that's Satan. He, he messing with you, in it? Bonita, you ain't got to get to church all that much. I need that. I'm gonna hook you up. My friend got this business they started. You better act like you better act like you got. Oh, mm -mm, mama took your key. <laughs> Jesus said, "I took all the keys from the enemy." And I know I'm repeating it, but I got three minutes. Now I got two minutes. Now I got one minute. Now I'm gonna have to finish this in a minute. <laughs> all the power of the enemy. Now here, what I'm gonna say. Jesus put it all under your feet. Your feet. Look at your feet. As a matter of fact, let's stand up. Let's just do this together before we go. Come on, because like, we can't miss this. There we go. You've been, you've been needing a stretch too. Okay. Yes, you, yes, you have. Ugh. 
get, give you a good anointed stretch. Keep your hands down because you don't, it's been a lot going on. Yeah. All right. Now look at what, because I want you to see the word of God so you will understand it. Where, he said, I'm going to put all of it under your feet. And I'm going to show you exact scriptures, but not, not now because we're going to go under your feet. Here's my question. Point to your feet. Now, if you can answer this, answer it out loud. It's okay if you get it wrong. I'll teach you. Where are your feet? Where are your feet? See, it's amazing that you talk about the place that's holding your feet. Where are your feet? No. Your feet belong to your body. And your feet are under your body. Look at your feet. They're attached to your body. Did anybody come in here without your feet attached to your body? It's always two people in every church. <laughs> the word of God said Jesus put all of the enemy's power under your feet. Now repeat after me. The feet belong to the body of Christ because you belong say because I belong to Jesus and the feet belong to the body of Christ. So all these things are under my feet. All right. And we're going to go back tomorrow. We're going to continue the rest of these notes. But now we just learned how to start a good fight. You're going to start a good fight, baby. Know where these things are before you start. Know that you have, what's the P? And the A. How did you get it? From who? From Jesus Christ, right? And he took all of that from who? Where was Satan? And he got what out? By who? And when he kicked him out, he took all that and gave it to who? You. And once you're a believer, you just signed up for power. And since you have power, that means what can hurt you? It's going to all come to you, baby. But it won't what? Hurt you. It's just a weapon. And it will not prosper. I didn't get that far. So everything is what? It's under what? Can you, before we go home, can you do the under my foot shuffle? Can you just push some stuff under your feet and just let the devil know you ain't, they ain't crawling up your ankle. You ain't coming up my leg. You ain't coming up my thighs. You ain't coming up my hips. You ain't going to make it to my stomach. You're not going to make it to my heart. You're not going to get in my head because it's all under my feet.